Good evening. We thank our gracious hostesses and all of you kind people for joining us tonight. And we say, if any of you wish to draw closer, you are welcome to. We encourage you to be comfortable and as connected as you wish to feel. And then maybe a little more. It's always good to be more connected than you wish. We are so pleased to be with you tonight as the, uh, as our conduit says, as the warm-up act for the ladies. We tell you, you are not here by chance. You are not here tonight just because of any reason other than you are contracted to join us for this event. Your soul has heard the call and felt compelled to arrive. We have already known of the arrival of each of you and have spent what you call this afternoon we have been sending energetic lines from the library directly to each of you. We invite you to receive these energies from the library into your crown chakras and your third eye chakras, into all of your chakras, your heart, to receive the energy and messages and connect all the better with your guides, your helpers, your guardians. As we are speaking, all you need to do is relax, receive, the more preposterous it seems, the more real it is, we can tell you that. You live in a life that is more mundane than it should be. So we jolt you with some spirit shock treatment by bringing you the real existence for a few moments. We were hoping for a laugh at our joke. <laughs> we thank you. There is no such thing as spiritual shock treatment, we tell you. But it gives us a chuckle to imagine it. We wish to talk to you for a moment about connecting with your non-physical aspects. You know your body is more than just the flesh and firm. Your body is the energy that flows into you and out from around you. It is as though you look at a beautiful ripe peach, juicy and succulent, and you say the only real peach is the pit. This is how you are living your lives and you view your existence. You keep yourself contained to the pit. Now the pit is important because the pit procreates further life from one little peach pit grows a great tree. However, it is not the succulent, aromatic, beautiful, colorful, exciting parts of the immediate life. We encourage you to grow from your pit and embrace the true flesh, which is your soul, your spirit, your energy. As you go forward with that aspect of life, you will find your life will have much more excitement to it. Even when you are sitting and doing nothing. If you allow yourself to embrace your entire essence of being, you can go to a place like your DMV and have the most exciting time. <laughs> yes. Each of you is fully connected and each of you is surrounded by many who love you. 
Some were those who lived in this life and knew you in this life, and some are those you know from outside of life. There are many elements here, and there are spirit animals. There are forests and gardens growing in this room. There are quite a few angels, at least one for each of you. There are many for you to converse with. As we step to the side and invite our lady companions to come through, we encourage you to have reunion time with your personal companions and with yourselves because you are truly the most exciting people you will ever meet. Get to know yourselves and be excited. We thank you and we step aside. Our beautiful children. We are filled with love and joy to be here with you at this moment. Feel your hearts open, flowing with love. Allow our love to flow through you. Receive it. In fact, take the hands of those beside you. Feel our love as we send it to you. Send your love. Feel love flowing from heart to heart, soul to soul, mind to mind becoming one in this group, one hive of love. Allow a wave of love to wash over you. Now squeeze the hands with love. Release. We wish to address an area of confusion among those of you who live in the more enlightened state of being. There are many of you who know, each of you in this room know, that you are here to share love and healing. You are here to raise the vibration of your planet so that this delightful speck of reality may take its place in true state of being. But you become confused, disoriented. You allow the dramas of your planet to drag you down. You feel the hurt of those around you. And it lowers your vibration. We wish to explain 
what is happening now and why it is that it is so important that each of you live your life in joy and do not become permanently emotionally displaced by the traumas that are here in the now. There are many souls on your planet. Some are human, some are not human. Of course, we have the nature and the animal collectives. I am speaking of the people, the human beings. Many human beings have souls in them that are not human. We will set those aside for the moment and return to them. Now we will discuss those that are human souls. Of the human souls, some are young. They are immature. They are maybe a thousand years old, a little more, a little less. Some are ancient. Some have been on this planet for longer than humans, for they are part of the earlier civilization that destroyed itself, remained, and then rose up to become the guides and mentors of human. Some of those are still here. They thought, because they had been through this before, they did not need to deal with their arrogance. It was their arrogance that destroyed their civilization before they come into this life and bring their arrogance from thousands of years ago to now. Some of those have not yet tempered their arrogance. They have ancient wisdom, great passion and emotion, but still think they know better than God. They still think they know better than anyone because they have been around for a paltry 50, 100,000 years. They are silly. There are some who are human that have been with humans and are very mature. We say everyone in this room is of that category if you are human. There is no false arrogance in this room. We can tell you that. The rain tells you that. There is too much false humility. Do not repress yourselves. Do not demean yourselves in an effort to be humble. True humility comes from being in the core of truth. If you are a wonderful person and you live in the resonance of truth, then you will acknowledge that you are a wonderful person. This is a weakness in this group here. Too much false humility that keeps your wings clipped so you do not fly. You think I'm not worthy of flight. The moment you think I am an ancient divine being in one incarnation of my eternal life, I can fly. Your wings will grow and you will soar. This is why we discourage false humility. In fact, do not worry about humility at all. Just resonate in truth. If it is truth, there is no judgment. And without judgment, you have no arrogance, no humility, nothing but reality. Then, when any messages come to you, if it is in the resonance of truth, you will not swat it to the side because you are too busy being humble that you cannot receive a message from us. Does this make sense? Yes. Does anyone have questions on this subject? 
does everyone understand the technique for resonating in truth instead of false humility and self-repression? Would you go over that for us? Yes, it is simple. The technique is, does it feel true in my heart? Does it feel true in my core, my gut, my sacral chakra? If your heart and your sacral chakra are in resonance of truth, then you are in truth. It is important that you resonate with truth because there are many humans on your planet, human souls, who are young and immature. They are wreaking havoc on your planet. They are out of control. Many of them are living the lives that they contracted to live. Many of them are not living the lives they contracted, but they're living the scenario they contracted. If you look at them in horror, it is the same as you did once long ago. You have evolved from that state. You cannot force them to evolve any more than anyone could have forced you to evolve 2,000, 5,000, 10,000 years ago when you were barbaric and warring and slaving and being ridiculous. This was not the way humanity was supposed to evolve. It is the way humanity chose to evolve. We make this point very clear. You were supposed to evolve in harmony with your planet and all the beings of your planet. You chose to step aside. And each of you in the circle says, not me, I do not choose that, not in this life. But thousands of years ago, when you were a young primitive soul, you did. You have evolved from that. You have learned your lessons. You have grown and matured. Many of you in this life have had a very difficult time. And there are many reasons for that. But we tell you this. Self-blame is not ever to be part of it. Do not say, I contracted for this, so I must suffer. Whether you contracted for it, or whether it happened to you, or whether someone else went off their soul contract and they're causing havoc, just know whatever happens, take it as a lesson, learn from it, grow from it, evolve, and then return to love, return to truth, 100%. Does this make sense? Yes. yes. When you are in a time of hardship or in a relationship that is bringing you distress, follow truth and say, how can I go from where I am now to a person of joyous love? you may see several paths ahead of you. That is all right. You may take a path that is not even to your awareness yet, but always find your way back to joyous love. Always. Why do you do that? Because many of you have evolved without anyone guiding you to become a sophisticated person. It took you a long time. You are now in a position to help guide the younger souls. You cannot force them. You cannot give them advice and expect them to follow it if they need to learn their lessons, but you can be teachers and mentors and guides. Just as you have your teachers, mentors, guides from above and some mentors who appear in life, we challenge you to go forward be teachers, mentors, and guides. 
you may have an immediate impact. You may feel as though you have no impact, but the results may come later in this life or a following life. There will always be an impact. You are each here tonight because you are ready. You are ready to mentor. How will you mentor? You look in your heart and say, what can I do to make a world a better world? It may be a small thing, smile at a child. Oh, we are told that may get some of you in trouble. It may be a small thing, smile at an adult. Or donate $5 to a cause. Or run for political office. Or encourage someone. Volunteer somewhere. Or meditate with divine gurus so that you may connect your energy to the networks, the grids, the mandalas of those who are healing the planet with them. There are many things you can do. Every tiny thing that you do to create positive energy for your planet will be a blessing. If you give your day 100 small blessings, that is 100 good impacts. Even if you do not speak with another person that entire day, you have made 100 impacts by smiling to yourself, by waving at a butterfly, by smelling a flower, by meditating, by taking a walk, these will have as much of an impact on your planet as the $5 or 1,000 you donate. As the speaking out so that your truth may resonate. All of it has a greater impact when you are strong and healthy inside. Do you understand this? When you read your newspapers and we say, stop reading newspapers, it is murdering trees. But when you read your newspapers and you become despondent, you may see the truth of the moment, the reality of the situation. Your despondency does not help. Say to yourself, what can I do to go from depressed to joyous? When I'm in a joyous state, I can create better healing. This is your challenge in the now that we give to you. Do you understand this? Yes. There is a time coming soon. We hope in this timeline, but in many timelines on earth, the time is coming soon where your planet will come together as one. The more you live in joy, the more you put your hand out to hold the hands of others, the more likely it is for this timeline to have a salvation that is far greater than you can imagine. The future of your planet is potentially glorious. This can only be built through joy, love, inspiration, and optimism. If you go through each day feeling optimistic, you are helping your planet's future. Remember your body is greater than your physical. Be your entire luscious peach. 
And it's summertime. Please eat peaches. Each time you eat a peach, think, this is me. I, that may sound perverse. <laughs> <sighs> the time is coming when all humans are equal. It is coming fast. The time is coming when all humans are empathic, telepathic, speak with animals. The time is coming when physical and non-physical merge into the same reality for all people. This time is coming. We encourage you to help usher it in quicker by merging non-physical and physical realities in your daily life and filling them with joy. This is our message. Do you have any questions? No questions? So could you talk a little bit more about what you mean by merging non-physical and physical reality? Yes. Many of you, when you were children, had your imaginary friends. Your dreams were as real to you as your days and your 3D actions. You had wonderful, creative imaginations. As we go through our lives, it is easy to forget the power of this. Remember, every great invention, every great scientific, literary, artistic, mathematical, breakthrough began with imagination. Where can your imaginations take you? And how can you use them to expand reality? There is so much happening around you all the time. When you have a moment to be quiet, Stop and think about the fact that your guardian angel is with you all the time. How often have you conversed with your guardian angel? Have a chat with your angel. The more you are receptive to whatever comes in, accept it, the easier it will be for you to communicate directly with your guardian angel. Each of you is connected all the time to your soul, to your higher self, to your past lives, to your soul families. Talk with them. Ask them for lessons. Ask what animal spirit guides wish to converse with you. Do you have an animal that you have been connected with, drawn to, your entire life? Do you have an element, wind, fire, earth, rain, rivers, oceans, tropical, or winter, or desert, that calls to you? Whatever calls to your imagination, whatever you have always been fascinated by, there is a reason for it. You may have a past life that was connected with it, or it may be part of your natural power within you for this life. It may be part of your tasks and your, your life path ahead of you. Ask every one of these beautiful, creative connections, why are they connected with you? 
Why do you feel in your heart this emotion or that emotion when something comes to mind? Especially if that something has no relevance in your life. The more you quietly and stilly receive, the more you can connect. Remember, you are always surrounded by those who love you, and they would love to connect with you. Each of you take a moment now. Think of someone either a human or an animal who you loved very dearly and has passed from your life. One who is no longer alive in this plane. Think of this person or animal, this being, this soul, and moments of joy and love that you shared. I tell you, no guilt, no sorrow, just moments of joy and love. Allow that love to wash over you, to fill you. Think of happy moments, laughing moments, cuddling, snuggling moments. I tell you at this moment, that soul is with you. Open your heart and embrace each other. Allow the love to fill your being, fill your heart, your throat, your core, to flow around you like a love energy blanket. Feel it on your cheeks, your forehead and eyes. Your loved one will step back now, but understand, and if you wish, you can keep a cord or a hand or a paw in the center of your back behind your heart chakra. Your loved one is stepped back behind you, but is still sending love from their heart to yours from behind. Anytime you wish, you may call your loved one to you. You can feel how happy and healthy your loved one is. Lightness, delight. We encourage you to practice this with all of your non-physical loved ones. Call your guardian angel to you. Invite your guardian angel to merge with your body, to wrap around you so your energy, your angel's energy are one. If you are receptive now, your angel will flow in and around you.
Now it is time for your angel to also flow behind you, but keep a cord, a hand, a heart-to-heart -heart connection going through from your angel through your back to your heart chakra and then from there filling your entire chest cavity. You can feel the different resonance from your soul companion and your guardian angel for they are different frequencies but both are love. We encourage you to practice this exercise. You create sacred space for yourself to an energy flowing meditation and then say the words, my body and soul are protected by the divine love of my guardians, the angels, God, Gaia, the masters, only those with the greatest love for me who are here to help me with my desire to become my best self, those who will bring joyous love to me in this exact moment are welcome in my presence to communicate with and connect with me. The words need not be exact. It is the intention of your protection. You can feel how protected you are and through there invite your friends to connect with you, speak with you, help you with cleansing your being and expanding your energy. This is an exercise we encourage you to practice daily. As often as you like. And we encourage you to share it with your friends, your companions. Do you feel how much more powerful you are now so that you may go forward and help your beautiful little planet? Do you feel this? Yes. Wonderful. We feel it as well and are filled with joy with all the goodness here. We wish to tell you one more thing. There is a time coming of great total equality where oppression will not even make sense to anyone. There will be more mature and less mature. There will be those who thrash about and have tantrums because they are young souls, but they will be overwhelmed by the increasing older souls. We mentioned there are many on this planet who are not of human origin. There are those who have come from other places to take over human bodies to help you with the evolution of your planet. There are some in this room who think of yourselves as human. You do not know that before you incarnated as a human, you were another being with another race in another dimension. If you feel slightly out of place, you may well be, and that is all for the good. It does not matter where you came from. All that matters is for you to honor yourselves as eternal beings of divine love, 
who are spending short periods of time in fleshy form. We find it amusing as well. <laughs> Did you know each of you, when you are not in human form, socialize with us as your friends? And yet we are here greeting our dear friends and you look upon us as though we are something other than you. You are us. We forget ourselves when we come to life as well. Did you know Gaia has spent time as human? On occasion. She also forgets who she is and has a rough time. She does not incarnate now. There's no call for that. But she has. You can imagine all of the chains and locks on that soul to keep her from remembering her divine nature. <laughs> but that was very long ago when Earth was a more calm, peaceful place. As they say, the chef must taste their food before they serve it. The divine creator must play as the creation before saying this is complete. So we tell you, you are in good company. We have spent time as you, you have spent time as us, and soon we will all be together so think of us as your peers, your friends, your equals. That will shake the false modesty out of you, won't it? <laughs> Hostess, how is the time? We have 15 minutes, and I was wondering if you would like to talk about the I am presence. Hmm. When each soul is born, each soul is born directly from God. God is, in actuality, your divine mother. If this makes sense, God is the one who births each life in each creation, in each dimension, in each frequency. Each being, each soul, is a spark of God. Each of you is a living embodiment of God, the divine creator. In this planet, female create life. Why is this? Because this planet was designed to be a balance of what you call masculine and feminine. If all power comes from creation and all power came from God, the divine masculine, then Gaia, the divine feminine, chose to create all physical power from the female. Energetic life from the male, physical life from the female, both come together as one. In this planet, none of you could exist without your soul spark and your physical life spark. And yet, you think of yourselves as hoping to attain to the level of God. You already are God. You do not need to look up. Look within, look to your spark. The greater you grow your spark, you become a ball of light. You allow the God to flow out of you. You are meant to be within yourself, the perfect yin and yang the perfect embodiment of masculine and feminine, of God and Gaia, 
of spiritual and physical, all within one being. As you look into yourself and accept the totality of yourself, you will find yourselves increasingly capable of greater and greater things. You cannot be great if you deny yourself. If you are a great singer and you keep your tonsils in a cage, you will not sing. <laughs> if you are a great dancer and you wear steel shoes and chains, you will not dance. As we tell you, you are more than your fleshy body. You are your soul inside. The body, really, it's the cage around the tonsils. But the cage is capable of great things. It is capable of being a marvelous lotus flower. It is capable of being a fabulous container. Did you know each of you could change your physical shape? Each of you can decrease your age. You say, well, I've hit age 60, I'll go backwards now. You can do this. Each of you is capable of levitating your bodies, of being in 10 places at once. Each of you is capable of amazing things. You have forgotten how to do these things. And as you forget how to accomplish your, your abilities, your soul, your spark becomes smaller and smaller and smaller until you can't even, where is that spark? That spark is in me somewhere. I don't know. I can't find it. Oh, there it is. It's under a dust bunny. You keep your souls under your bed with the dust bunnies and one sock that you forgot about. <laughs> we have 10 more minutes. 10 minutes. So we tell you, Release the false modesty. Claim the God that is within you. Revel in the magic that is here in your bosom. One way to do this, align your chakras as our hostess leads beautiful weekly meditations to do so. And we believe you encourage everyone to do this daily, correct? Yes. We encourage you daily to align your chakras. So now the next time our hostess says this, no, she is backed by the divine. <laughs> Thank you. We needed that. <laughs> we were still working on daily participation. We bestow our authority upon you. <laughs> Humor is important. Align your chakras. You will find as you align your chakras, certain things will come out and say, no, not me. I have a broken heart. I feel anger. I'm feeling depressed. My brain is telling me logical things that negates everything in reality. So you say, huh, the alignment is not, I'm going to align in spite of all of this. It is getting to know yourself, to say, brain, why do you negate this? Or heart, why do you think you can block the great flow of love? Love will not stop flowing. The rain was falling, and we put up an umbrella we say, oh, now the rain cannot fall. It still falls around you. You're like, oh, my legs are splattered. Oh, no, my shoes are soaking wet. When divine energy flows through you, you cannot block it. You cannot. It will flow. You can look within yourself, see what is refusing absorption of divine love and give it love anyway. You always are capable of receiving divine love. Is, is there a question? Tell her not to worry about that. Don't worry about that. 
as you acknowledge a spark of God is within you. And you think of spark as a tiny thing. But understand, to God, your entire body is a tiny thing. Your spark of God can fill your entire being and emanate around you a mile. That is still a spark. The spark of God is within you. It is your choice to push it down or expand it out. As you expand it out, all of these abilities that you think are impossible or you think everyone else can do it but not me, you will find that you do it. I didn't know I could do that. You will find one day you're walking across a room and you go, oh, I'm like two feet in the air because you have the spark of God and you have forgotten to repress yourself. The I am. Each of you is an eternal being of divine love. Each of you has lived many lives before. Each of you will live many lives again. And each of you are alive eternally outside of this life. Each of you has an entire life outside of the physical where you connect with other souls and you accomplish miraculous, joyous, extraordinary actions. Each of you is created it's capable of creating life just with a thought or a spark. Each of you created the lives that you are in. In this life, you are setting platforms for the life that you, your soul, is already creating for your next life. That life may be here on earth. It may be somewhere else. You might be an animal your next life, a tree, a rock. You may be in an entirely different dimension or with an entirely different race of beings. Do not limit yourselves based on what you remember and you think you know. Expand yourselves to what the whole of you knows and the whole of you is questioning and exploring. You may ask yourself, why did I choose this life? What lessons am I learning? And what has happened in my life that's not part of my lessons, but I will learn from it anyway. Learn your lessons and move on. You would laugh if I said a 24-year-old person was still in third grade because they refused to learn their lesson, correct? And yet, <laughs> learn your lessons so you may move on. Five minutes. Does anyone have a question? Yes. I would like to bless the ocean and have the destructive plastic disappear, melt into the ocean and become uh, nutrients for the animals. Do you encourage that? I do encourage this. We do encourage this. Our pronouns are confused. We tell you there is a simple technique for this. Imagine the water. Bring in the most divine love to your body and send this love to the water. Each of you has the ability to transmute one molecule to become another molecule. You may bring in the love, send your thoughts of love, your emotions of love, to the garbage and waste in the ocean. 
it will become infused with love and take on the easiest, healthiest form that it can. There are those who already do this, including our divine hostess. You may do this to your physical planet, to the land, Your water needs a great deal of healing. Happily, you will see in the next two to four years, your oceans will become dramatically healthier. We tell you this. It is coming. How about one more question? Yes. One more question. This is usually a group that's filled with questions. It's amazing, they're so quiet. They are each conversing with their guides. Oh, they are receiving answers directly. We tell you everything you have heard from your guides today, especially if it seems too good to be true. I concur with this. Receive it, <laughs> accept it, bring it into your heart with thanks. We encourage you to go forward with love. We encourage you to explore the boundaries of the physical and the non-physical. We encourage you to use your imagination and use your inspiration. If you have a thought of, I need to go to a drumming circle, go to a drumming circle. If you say, I need to sit outside and speak with the squirrels, get a bag of peanuts, sit outside and speak with the squirrels. We encourage you to have fun and connect with the world outside of purely 3D. The more you enjoy this, the more your mind can expand, the more your mind can expand, the easier it is for us to send healing energy through you to help you and help your planet. We give our blessings to each of you. And we tell you, your souls are up here with us and they are very happy because it's a rare time when they can be with us there and with us here on both levels. It is an extraordinary network, a grid of energy we have created. Because of this, we encourage each of you to connect with your souls, your higher selves. Tonight, invite your souls into your sleep. Invite your guides into your sleep, especially tonight, as this grid is powerful and bright. Thank you so much. We thank you. We share our love. We share our blessings. We are here with you always. And we are so grateful that you are here with us. Remember, wonders are coming. Blessings be.